Living in private accommodation or living out can be a great opportunity to get a feel for what it's like to live independently and to experience the city in a different way. If you've never lived out in Oxford before, it might feel difficult to know where to start. This podcast will cover some of the main points and questions that students often ask us when looking for accommodation. The key message is stay calm, take your time and explore the options available to you. So, when should you start looking? Students generally start looking for accommodation at the beginning of Hillary term, so January, for a lease which starts in October of that year. However, students do find houses later in the year, so if you haven't started looking yet, don't worry. Before you start looking for a house, you'll need to think about who you want to live with. Do you want to live alone or will you be moving to Oxford with your family? If you're planning to live with other students, how many people would you like to share with? Shared houses in Oxford generally range from two-bed apartments to eight-bedroom houses. It's worth noting that with large groups, it might be more difficult to find a property. When choosing your housemates, think about a variety of factors. Do you want to live with someone on the same course as you, or do you prefer to keep conversations about studies separate? Do you mind living with a smoker? Do you mind mess, or are you very tidy? Would you prefer a quieter household, or would you prefer a livelier atmosphere? You'll also need to think about how much to spend. If you're planning to live with friends, do you all have the same budget? Have you included household bills in your estimations? Have you considered which area you may like to live in? If you're new to Oxford, it may be a good idea to familiarise yourself with the different areas of the city. Factors to think about are rent prices, the distance from your college or department, local bus routes and amenities in the area. Once you know who you want to live with and you've thought about where you might like to live, how should you start looking for properties? You could try looking online, there are various websites where landlords will advertise directly or through agencies. If you're not sure where to start, you can contact the Student Advice Service for more information. Another option would be to go through a letting agency or estate agent who will sometimes manage the property on behalf of the landlord. There will be a fee associated with this, so always find out how much you need to pay and what the money's for. You should never pay a fee just for obtaining a list of properties. Always choose an agency that's registered with an association. Further information about this can be found in our Living Out Guide, which you can find on our website. Once you start arranging viewings, it's a good idea to see as many places as you can. This way you can compare them. Take your Living Out Guide with you. There's a checklist in the back, which will help you to remember what to look out for. Check the whole house. For example, are there any signs of damp or disrepair? Is the property adequately furnished? Have smoke alarms been installed? Take notes and ask if you can take pictures on your phone to help you to make a decision later. Most importantly, take your time. You shouldn't feel rushed. Once you've decided on a property, you'll be asked to sign a tenancy agreement. If your landlord does not live with you, you will probably have an Assured Shorthold Tenancy Agreement, or AST. This is a legal document which sets out the terms of the tenancy It will contain details such as how much rent to pay, the start and end date of the tenancy and the responsibilities of the tenant and landlord. Once you've signed an AST, it can be very difficult to get out of, so it's crucial to read the contract carefully and make sure that you understand everything in it. If there's anything you're not sure about, don't sign and contact the Student Advice Service to ask about our tenancy checking appointments. Depending on the type of tenancy you have, you and your housemates may sign separate contracts or you may all sign one contract. The latter indicates that you may have joint and several liability, which means that each of you is liable for the whole of the rent. In other words, if one person doesn't pay, you are all responsible for paying that portion of the rent. As a student, you will usually be asked for a guarantor. This is someone who agrees to pay the rent on your behalf if you don't and would usually be a parent or a close relative who is based in the UK. If you are joint tenants, the guarantor may be responsible for your housemate's rent if they don't pay. So it's really important for you and your guarantor to read the agreement carefully and understand what their legal responsibilities are. If you're an international student without a UK-based guarantor, you may be asked to pay more rent in advance. If you're worried about this, contact us for advice. You will also need to pay a deposit, which could be anywhere between one and three months' rent. This is to cover the cost of any potential damage to the property. If you have an AST agreement, the deposit should be placed in a government-approved tenancy deposit protection scheme within 30 days. The landlord or agent must tell you which one and give you a receipt.
In Oxford, if there are three or more sharers in a house who are not related, it's classed as a house in multiple occupation, or HMO. There are additional regulations governing HMO properties, so they may require a licence from the council. You should check with the agent or landlord if you think the house should have a licence. We hope this podcast will help you with the process of finding accommodation in Oxford. If you have any concerns or need further advice, contact the Student Advice Service using the contact details on our website.